Hi, my name is Dr. Dramon and through the Oral Health Channel today we are going to be talking about macroglossia. Let's start. So I am making this episode because someone in the comment section said I have to make an I should make an episode on scallop tongue. So instead of just talking about scallop tongue, I think it's important to talk about something why scalloping happens that is the crenation of the tongue of the crenated tongue and let's talk about something known as macroglossia that is the size of the tongue is more than normal now macroglossia is albeit very rare and it can be of three types it can be true macroglossia that is there is some underlying disorder which could be congenital or acquired in congenital or disorders you can have stuff like beckwith with Widman syndrome down syndrome and uh, in acquired uh, you know syndromes and disorders you can have hypothyroidism uh, you know blastomycosis even amyloidosis and all those things so that is the thing when it comes to false or pseudo macroglossia that could be because of the fact that it, there could be the different size of other structures which is smaller and that's why it gives an appearance that also happens in the cases where you have enlarged tonsils because of which the tongue gets pushed upward and outward and that's why it looks bigger and you might have functional macroglossia that is basically the tongue has undergone some procedure some sort of uh, you know some sort of functional procedure or surgical procedure for which it gives the appearance that uh, it gives a bigger appearance of the macroglossia because of some tumor or something of that sort now usually it's not a problem because the tongue has a lot of functions apart from its taste it has a lot of motor functions it has its functions in speech swallowing even expression for that matter and what you have to understand is that usually macroglossia is not a problem as long as there is no functional deficit that is happening but it has been found that a, an enlarged tongue can lead to a lot of problems especially when you're growing up because your bones and your teeth are still very malleable towards growth right even if your teeth have come out your bone is still malleable and that those kind of pressure changes that the tongue can cause can lead to spacing uh, you know uh, being created in between the teeth and that can lead to malocclusions and other things this can also affect your you know aesthetics and also it can affect your you know speech because of the fact that you could have tongue thrusting kind of issues you could have bimaxillary protrusion and all those other things which requires a cosmetic and a functional rehabilitation on top of that you have to understand that if it's a true macroglossia usually you don't do anything about it because if it's congenital it's all right if it's acquired you need to treat the underlying disorder of the cause some drugs can also cause macroglossia such as cyclosporin and other drugs so you have to be very careful about what the underlying cause is when it comes to other things in the long run you have to understand that if your tongue is that big enough that it can cause sleep apnea because your tongue falls back while you're sleeping it can cause temporary cessation of breathing and then it can affect your sleep cycle and that's where your AHI scores go higher and then you you know become a patient of OSAS that is obstructive sleep apnea syndrome and then you can have other metabolic diseases now it sounds like a very far-fetched thing but the tongue actually does contribute in terms of a confounding factor that if your tongue is big and it falls back while you're sleeping it definitely can cause episodes of sleep apnea all in all you have to understand that it's not something supposed to be that you're supposed to be worried about but then again in cases of tumors you definitely need to resect the tongue uh, in cases of medication side effects you have to understand that you have to treat the substitution of the drug in cases of acquired macroglossia you need to treat the underlying cause and finally if it is somewhat a big time orthodontic concern in terms of speech you might have to go for orthodontic treatment arch expansion depending on what's your functional problem and your aesthetic concern depending upon that the rarest possibility of a treatment that is cosmetic treatment might be a glossectomy or a partial glossectomy different types of glossectomies are you know uh, under the you know literature but that's a very far-fetched option and that should be only considered for a medical purpose such as uh, a purpose of let's say a tumor excision or something of that sort usually for cosmetic reasons we don't do it but there are surgical procedures uh, keyhole glossectomy wedge shaped glossectomy and other laser glossectomies which are you know very less you know uh, you know with a very less bleeding risk that can be done but then again if you want to go ahead with these procedures it's something that you have to be very careful about and you have to speak to your dental provider and your plastic surgeon as well to talk about the risk versus benefit of the uh, you know the procedure because the tongue is a very vascular organ and it might lead to some sort of compromise so you have to be very careful about these things all in all as long as it's not causing any functional deficit 
uh, macroglossia is very benign in terms of you know causing any problems but if you're having any sort of functional deficits such as obstructive sleep apnea you know breathing issues or you have any sort of you know uh, dento facial abnormality in terms of you know spacing between teeth and bimaxillary protrusion that you require um, you know orthodontic intervention then it is better that you go for the orthodontic intervention so that you can take care of these uh, little problems so this was today's episode please like share subscribe and do press the bell icon button for important updates if you want to get in touch with me here are my social media handles kindly refrain from calling me directly as i might be busy with patients just drop your message on whatsapp with your name location and the common oral health problem that's causing you concern if you have any queries doubts apprehensions or insights please feel free to put them in the youtube comment section so that's it for today thank you